right, welcome back. Um, it's gonna be kind of a long, drawn out video. Um, if you're interested in the camshaft change in this engine, be a good video for you. If not, it's gonna be really boring. It just is. Uh, this is for a Kohler Courage engine, but you have to have a lot of courage to own one of these things because they do have their issues. Uh, but if you're not familiar with it, this is what the camshaft looks like. What happens is on these is this little piece right here, when these things will get hard to start, and if you're watching this, you already know why you're here. So, you know, this little piece right here basically turns and it puts that little bump out there, that little guy right there, you see the little bump, and that lowers the compression, makes it easier to start or makes it uh, able to start. If that doesn't work, it doesn't start. So this part has had like three or four revisions as far as I can tell. It goes bad. These engines also have extraordinarily bad starters. So if you suspect that this camshaft is a problem, you might have a starter issue. Uh, they have a different, they have a couple different starters with different size um, tooth number of tooth gears to make it easier to start. Uh, I would recommend, to be honest, not buying a Kohler one because when you look at what the Kohler one costs, it's like, yeah, engine ain't worth that buy an aftermarket one off of eBay, Amazon or something. They work just fine too. So what I'm going to talk about, about on this video is not a lot of talking, a lot of showing. It's going to be changing that camshaft out. It's kind of involved, but it's not that bad. It's not like an old Briggs and Stratton or an old Tecumseh engine. So it's not bad. Um, one of the other issues is if you kind of goof up like I did, and when you put this back together, and you realize, huh, yeah, you know, you get in a hurry and you forget to tighten the flywheel nut down all the way. And then you go to start it and it kind of starts and then it just, you know, spits and sputters and dies. That's because, you know, you know, the idiot putting it together forgot to tighten the nut down and sheared the key. So if you do that, let me get really close here. That's the key number that will fit most of these engines. Yeah, I did that. And uh, for my particular engine, uh, I will put a link down in. I, it's an SV601, I believe. I will put the specs down there. And this is the actual part that I use for mine. So basically, yeah, you're going to get bored if you're not interested in it. So uh, here we go. All right, well, here we are. And uh, this is uh, this is the twenty horse version of this. Um, if you got a single cylinder Courage, you probably have this problem, unless it's a relatively new engine. So uh, I've decided to go ahead and do it because it has a really bad harding, hard starting problem. It's gotten progressively worse. If you turn the engine over backwards, you can sometimes get it to work right and crank right. But this is just a common issue. And it's like, it's got 100 hours. And I know these things break. And it's probably broken on this one where the spring is broken. So I figure might as well go ahead and do it. So we'll start by removing the cover here, which is not held on by anything. But, um, you know... We're not even using, you know, bubble gum and duct tape at this point. All right. The uh, cover cover bolts here are tens. No, they're not. They're eights. All right, we're back with uh, the bowl and the flex extension, which if you or wobble, if you don't have one of these, let me get it up really close. If you don't have one of these um, that lets your sockets do that, I, I, I'd re really get some. And to be honest, it doesn't matter what brand you buy. I have broken snap on a broken craftsman. It doesn't matter when it's quarter wrench. These things are just super flimsy, regardless of brand but it makes getting to these rear ones much easier. The one thing I will say is that uh, on these Kohlers, it's so much easier to remove this cover than it was on the old Briggs and Stratton engines. 
Those things you had to take half the engine apart just to get the stupid cover off. It was a bad design. It was just designed to make sure the uh, repair guys got a bunch of hours working on stuff. So, next we're going to have to pull the starter and I have to pull the coil, pull the flywheel in whatever order I end up doing it at. Okay, well, I don't know where my other one is at the moment and I've never used this impact, so we're going to see if it actually works. I have no idea. It probably worked better if it was the right size. Did I read that? I totally read that wrong. I'll be back. Let's try this again. Okay. Let's try this again. Everything is spread around in the shop because I've got multiple pro projects going on. And I should have done this in the fall, but I was working on the Mustang. So, you know. <laughs> wow. That's kind of sad. Well, then again, it is only 70 pounds. Now, to get this, uh, this uh, little guy off of here, we will take this bolt back, put him back on here. Yes, somewhere there's tools. It's just the way we used to do it in the mower shop. My big brass hammer, very fond of it. A little leverage right there. And sometimes you turn around a couple times. Just a little leverage, give it a pop until it comes loose. There it goes. Light pressure. You don't need to break it. Just light pressure. And come on, come on, come on. Here we go. Don't lose the key. This little guy right here. Don't lose that. And also inspect it to make sure there's no little grooves in it. If there's a little groove in here, that means it's sheared. That means your timing is off. Now, if you're not familiar with it, this piece right here, this is what charges your battery. There's magnets on the inside of that flywheel that spin around here. Now, if you get a bunch of crap that build up in here, you can actually get enough in here that where it just won't charge. Weird, but... You know, it's not, you know, dirt and stuff is not magnetic, but it, it makes a difference for some reason. But if your yours is not charging, this is what the power comes from. Then there's a voltage regulator as well and some other associated pieces. So next, I'm going to pull stuff off over here. I'm going to clean this off some. Then we'll pull this top cover off. All right, well, I... Uh, Lost the ratchet I just had. Okay, there it is. Uh, I went ahead and just blew this off with the air hose while I had to move you guys because you're in the way. And uh, I'm just going to pop that vent hose off of there. And we got a couple of torques. They're tighter than I thought. And that is a Torx 30. Um... Actually, before I take this off all the way, I am going to put a mark on here. All right, we're going to spin that back in there. Yeah, you kind of see that. Okay, you kind of see that. I got you guys a little bit closer than earlier. So Now, this is one of my favorite ratchets I've ever had. I have no idea who made it. Um, I have others that work like it. It's actually made in USA. Um, it's an old ratchet, but as you here. It doesn't click. It's a one-way roller bearing. You know, 
like in a transmission. So I, I really like that style. All right, so since this thing's got slots in it, I'm going to put some marks and, you know, just in case it actually matters. So I don't know if it does on this, but uh, just in case. Can you see that? I'll bring it closer to see that. Get you guys a little shorter here. Okay, so I am assuming you can see that. You guys are like a foot and a half away. If you can't see that, then, you know, you need glasses worse than I do. So what I did is just mark the location of these two bolts in case there's an issue with alignment. And I don't want to have to figure out alignment. It's just easier to mark it and put it back where it came from. Ah, it moves, so there is an issue. There is a need for that alignment on this one. All right, so good here, good here, good there, good there. Uh, looks like we just got a bunch of bolts to run out and see if it comes off. Okay, now these are all tens and tight. All right, so yeah, there's going to be some weird color, probably flicker from that light there. But these little wires coming down here. So this is your voltage regulator right here. This little guy right here, voltage regulator. Uh, this is your stator. So if you're not charging, you've got, you know, alternated current coming from this, going to this, and then this rectifies it. That rectifies it into DC and sends it to your battery to charge halfway DC, but it's DC nonetheless. So I'm going to fiddle with this and uh, figure out what I need to do to get it out of the way. All right. Uh, what I'm going to do is, again, you know, probably the not recommended method for doing things, but I don't care. Um, these two wires... Uh, the wires from this stator right here are plugged into a connector and you have to take them out of the connector in order to get it through this little hole right here. I'm not going to do that. So I'm just going to take this loose. You saw those screws in there. So I'm going to take that loose. There's one of the screws. And I'm just going to give me some extra leeway. because I can't actually unplug this thing while it's mounted to the block because the connector's on the back side for some brilliant reason. Um, but, uh, yeah. Again, it's just, you know, when you're working on things, you're always asking why, why, why. I don't know if any of this is in shot or not, but there's the voltage regulator. So you've got AC here, AC here, and you've got DC coming out the middle. So if I remember correctly, it's got to be, what is it, 30 volts or something, 38 volts uh, AC on the outer. And you should be getting about, uh, I mean, optimistically, I would like to see 14 and a half volts coming off the center connector when that's working correctly. Um, is it going to be that way? Probably not. I, it'd probably be much lower than that. That's just the way it always seems on these things. They just, they tend to just barely charge. Ah. Get out of there. All right, well, let's see. 
I were to go grab the right tool and see what I was doing, I could pop those terminals out of there. And I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. There it goes. So you can see it on the center one. You put blade in that side right there where that little notch is, and then it comes out eventually. Now, unfortunately, there's yet more garbage connected to this because it goes down to this relay down there. But at least we'll have a little more, a little bit more length to work with. Uh, yeah, it's all cluttered up, but a little more room to work with. Let me turn this off because I know the color of that really screws up the uh, the uh, picture on the camera. So let's get all these little guys out of here now. Okay, just making sure it's still filming. Tappa, tappa, tappa. Hang on, let's hit that with the air hose again. And the reason this is so difficult is because I'm trapped between the mower and a garage door because I just don't have any room. And it's too sunny to have the window or the door open. You don't want that coming up. Got that loose. Now, I'm going to come over here and use a pedal I never use, and that's the parking brake, and knock everything over because I just don't have any room. Now, the reason for this is to uh, take the belt tension off the crankshaft because I don't want the crankshaft being pulled this way while I'm trying to take this off. It doesn't help any. And this is going to be in the way. Why they did that, you know, just, just to annoy me, I'm guessing. Had to be. I believe there's a plot. Might as well, you know. There it goes. There it is, there it is, there it is. Now I'm just going to rotate that around. All right. There's the engine. Now, like I said, I don't know if this thing's working right or not, but... I've got it. Things got 100 hours. They fail. It has issues. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it. So now I've got to turn the engine over till I get the line, the marks to line up. And I don't have a good way to do that. Okay. Now I won't put the bolt back in, stuck a wrench on it, and just cranked it around till I got. Uh, it's lined up again now there is a dot there's a dot there and then there's a dot on here right next to where it says exhaust and on the side there's a dot and there's a dot right next to where it says intake because obviously they use the same plastic piece for intake and exhaust i seriously doubt it's the same cam load but you never know so uh we're gonna pop this apart and see what we got in here we got a screwdriver sitting. Hopefully it's just going to pop out. I don't know. I really don't want to take the valves out unless I have to. So, you know, I've already adjusted them once. I don't want to mess with it again. But if I have to, I have to. We'll just see what happens. What's the worst thing that can happen? Okay. So... Pull that out. Go get my new heart. Okay, we're back. So I've got that pulled out. And uh, I'm going to start off by replacing this follower here. Now, if your engine is older, you're going to have a different design of this in here. Um, it's just... 
I'm here, I got it, I'm doing it. And then I said, if you've got one of these, it's got a different one and you know, this is how you do it. Which I will say, I am not really thrilled with uh, these engines. However, the one thing that is exceptionally good is the fact that the pan is on top. You don't have to take the engine off, flip it upside down, work on it. That is the one thing that is exceptionally well designed. Because in the old days of the old Briggs and Tecumseh's, it was a nightmare. It was a nightmare to work on those things. You had to take the whole mower apart just to do anything to it. And the governors used to strip out in the Volks, or not Volkswagens. <laughs> <laughs> That's another story. In the uh, Briggs and Stratton's, the governors used to go bad in those things all the time. And it was just, they just chew themselves to death. So, like I said, here's here's our two pieces here. I assume that some of this is still filming and, you know, I'm whatever. I'm just doing it. So, you know, and uh, I'm pretty much ready to go. I smeared enough oil on that. Now, if I'm really lucky, I'll be able to just slide this thing on here. Um, I kind of doubt it, though. Let's see. I wonder if I take that out, if I can line that up and, and do that kind of thing, maybe. If I did that, if I did that. to be a little bit over there. But if I put that there and I reach around and I find that all right you guys are just in the way. I can't work with you guys on the way. Very difficult. But if I come over here, I can see. That's where it needs to go, right there. Oh, he's sitting on that stupid pin. Guys, you're getting out of the way. Oh, come on. All right, now I know you guys didn't see that, and I'm not going to show you because it was too much of a fight, but. What I did was, is I got that dot lined up. I got uh, the shaft somewhat lined up in here. And I just put this on here, wiggle it back and forth, and then got clearance and it dropped right into place. That's all that took. I do find it interesting. This uh, new one is technically the same design. It does not work the same. This actually has a little bit of catch and the way it works before it throws out. So, I don't know. I don't know. We will see what happens when I get it all together and if it makes any difference whatsoever, but uh, now I have to clean the gasket surfaces and put a new gasket on it. And that's just lots of fun. And you're not watching that. All right, well, here's the uh, new camshaft in there. Gasket surface is uh, fairly well cleaned up. I'm gonna to touch up a few more spots. Uh, same here on the cover plate. You know, yeah, it's pretty good. Um, we'll say the one thing that did I, I didn't like, and I don't know if it, this will come up on camera or not, 
is if you look in that bore there, there's a little bit of wear in that uh, bore on the camshaft. It, and it's funny, this one doesn't have nearly as much. So, you know, obviously a, uh, it could probably use a little more oil pressure. But uh, otherwise, that's kind of uh, where I'm at. I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish cleaning this up, put the gasket on, put the cover on, and... Uh, you know, put it back together and I'll bring you back when I try to start it and see what happens.